Hello, this is Adriana Lombardo. It's a pleasure to see you here at my channel. I'm an executive coach with more than 20 years of experience using multiple methodologies, including cross-cultural coaching, where I help executives and families in the process of expatriation or to develop global leadership, creating bridges between cultures. I also work with neuro-coaching, helping persons to deal better with their emotions, fear, blocks, and achieve their goals. So, today, I'm going to talk about nudge theory, which is a theory developed by the Economics Nobel Prize winner of 2017, the professor Richard Toller from the University of Chicago. In the economics course offered at the bachelor level or high school, it's usually assumed that humans are rational individuals. Many economic theories, such as the law of supply and demand, come from this assumption. According to the law of demand, people want to buy more of a good or service when its price falls. This thinking comes from the idea that humans are rational. However, some people saw that this law wasn't working for certain goods. The economists saw that people wanted to buy more luxury goods when their price were higher. With this idea in mind, the Israeli professor Amos Vosky and Daniel Kahneman have done in-depth research and found out how consumers were thinking irrationally. This led to the creation of behavioral economics. Unfortunately, Amos Versky died in 1996, so Daniel Kahneman won the Economic Nobel Prize of 2002 alone. You can read about their theory on the book Thinking Fast and Slow. One of the key components of Kahneman and Versky's theory are the cognitive biases that affect decision-making. According to Richard Teller, a Nobel Prize winning professor from the University of Chicago, the key to overcome these cognitive biases is to use nudges, which are clever interventions to guide choice without restricting them. Nudging is done by what we call a choice architect, which is a fancy term for anyone who influences the choices that you make. Take the example of the cafeteria downstairs. Somebody had to decide where to put the salad bar, where to put the burgers, where to put the ice cream, where to put the coffee. That person is a choice architect because the arrangement of the food influences the choices that we make. Nudges are not mandates. Putting the fruit at eye level counts as a nudge. Burning junk food does not. Nudge is a key component in driving organizational change in several companies. Virgin Atlantic did some research to assess whether different behavioral interventions could decrease fuel consumption. According to the researchers, the intervention was cost-effective and was better than other interventions to reduce carbon emissions. The experiment involved a huge volume of data. 40,000 flights made by 335 captains in 2014. This study consisted of sending pilots information about their fuel usage, with a variety of additional messages and incentives. Pilots have to take decisions on factors such as how much fuel to put on the plane, speed, altitude, and route. Although pilots might be forced to take choices that burn additional fuel, their decisions are still extremely significant. The pilots were assigned to four separate research groups. A control group, who was only informed that they were being part of the study. A group who received monthly assessments of their fuel conservation performance. A group who got an explicit goal for cutting down fuel usage, who received either a prize when they succeeded or encouragement to do better if they didn't. And in the last group, Virgin Atlantic made donations on behalf of the pilots if they met their goals. All 
three experimental groups saved way beyond fewer than control group. The groups who received target goals performed the best. The prosocial group and the other group who received the target goals performed equally. Overall, the experiment saved 6,828 metric tons of fuel for Virgin Atlantic, worth 3.3 million Australian pounds at the time. Therefore, nudging is very effective in driving change management in companies, and it can be used in many different ways. One of them is to change employee perception. For example, let's say it's your sales employee's annual performance review. You could say that 65% of the customers had a positive service experience, or you could say that 35% of them had a negative service experience. One statistic informs the other, but if you said that 65% of the customers had a positive experience, you set a welcoming tone. However, if you said that 35% had a negative service experience, you could demotivate the employee. Nudging can also be used to increase motivation. If you want employees to increase sales, a possible motivational nudge is to set a sales goal and give employees a percentage of the amount above the sales goal. Many companies already do this in Brazil, where I come from. Nudge theory is also helpful at times of changes in the workplace culture. Encouraging employees to share their goals and ideas on the topic can help others accept the change. It is also possible to share other companies' experience to show employees how well an idea has worked and how they could achieve the same results. In conclusion, you can see that nudge theory is an extremely powerful and cost-effective tool that can be used by companies to drive organizational change, leading to long-laced behavior change. Thank you for watching this video and visiting my channel. If you like this video, subscribe so we will keep in touch. See you soon.